Welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks. I'm Lori LeBay, the founder and host of Alzheimer's Speaks, which is an advocacy-based company that is helping spread the word of service products and tools around the world, connecting families and professionals both to things they need to be able to serve those with dementia and their families better. Today, I am really excited to have with us the founder and co-founder of Maria's Place. And they are such a wealth of information. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So let me go ahead and introduce these two ladies to you. First of all, I want to introduce you to Maria Brady. She has many years of experience with older adults in a variety of settings. She is a creative force behind Maria's Place, and she is responsible for creating and finding suitable content for their website. So welcome, Maria. How are you doing today? Thank you. Thank you very much for having, you, uh, having us on your program. I'm doing great. Do you want to tell people where you're from? Yeah, I'm originally from Sweden, but I've lived in Ireland for well over 40 years now. So I'm, I'm based in Ireland. Okay. So I'm hearing a bit of an accent there. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Um, next, I want to introduce Maria's niece. Um, Nicole Batridge, and she is a life enthusiast. She is responsible for running the business side of Maria's Place. Even though they're on different sides of the world, they have been um, just really taking both of their passions and, and building Maria's Place together from a really heart-centered resource. So welcome, Nicole. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, good. I'm glad you both could both could make it today. Um, your resource is just absolutely uh, fantastic. I have to tell you, my daughter's a activities coordinator, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you got to be all over this site. There is just so much out there in terms of in terms of resources. But before we get into uh, really finding out more specifics about Maria's Place, I wanna ask each of you, um, and I'm gonna start with Maria first, if you have been personally touched by family or friends with any form of dementia. I have, uh, I worked in, the, in a nursing home for the last 10 years as an activity coordinator and over half of our residents do have dementia, so I have uh, quite a lot of experience there. My own mother was very ill a few years ago. She didn't have dementia per se, but at the very end of her life, there was confusion there and it's a similar circumstance to, to what I'm experiencing sometimes in the nursing home. Okay, great, thank you. Nicole, how about you? Have you been personally touched in your family? No, not yet. Um... But I know a lot of people who have been, and I've also worked with Maria for a while, so I've been involved in that way. Um, but yeah, that's my extent at this point. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, now, Maria, why don't you tell us the story of Maria's Place? You know, how, how you and Nicole's backgrounds kind of meshed and came together to create it, and, um, and what people can expect to find at Maria's Place. Okay, so I have worked with older adults for many years, first as an artist and a craft worker, doing workshops and demonstrations, mostly with older adults. And like I said, in, as an activity director in a nursing home for the last 10 years. And my co-workers and I often shared experiences as to what worked with different residents and what didn't work. And that was really helpful. We were able to, to put the right activity program to the person to make sure that they're fully engaged. And uh, I thought I spent a lot of time looking for activities to do with the residents so that it was fresh and the program was fresh and new all the time. And that time 
I was looking at lots of different websites and coming up with different craft projects. And I thought if I was having a problem time-wise with this, lots of other people probably had as well. And maybe I could do something about this. So I approached my brother Ulf and my niece Nicole in Colorado, and they were really interested in what I had to say. Uh, we weren't really focused at that time completely as to what we were going to do. There was a long journey. But along with Ryan Iguchi, who's our technical guru, we have worked on this project for the last five years. So we talked about how we could bring easily accessible activity ideas and materials for caregivers and seniors to more people. So we felt that this would benefit both at-home caregivers and those that work in a more professional setting. So as I said, at professionals, time is a big factor to do an activity. You have to figure out what you're going to do. You have to get the materials, invite the people that are suitable to do it. And there's a lot of planning before you actually do it. And on our site, you can find all this in the one place. You can press a button and print a quiz or watch a video. And it's, it's just nice to have everything amalgamated in, in one place. And as a family caregiver, I think a lot of people come into this completely raw. They have never experienced a situation like this before. And they may not, it's a long day and they may not know exactly what to do to, to engage the person they're with so that life doesn't get too boring. So for example, if somebody's used to read a lot, but maybe the eyesight is failing and to explore audio books, if, you know, see if that helps to just explore different avenues, uh, because there is a lot of idle time to fill. Um, our aim is sort of to inspire people to step out of the box and do something that's new and different as well. Because it's, it's a good feeling when you, as a caregiver, can actually empower your loved one to find enjoyment in something new that they haven't really done before. So as a person ages, they mightn't be able to do everything that they once were able to, but introducing new and fun activities it can help to spice up life a little bit. So for the last few years, we've been working on getting Maria's place to what it is today. And um, we've all learned a lot in this journey and developed a site that we feel is really useful for anybody caring for an older person, whether they have dementia or not. And we really are delighted to be able to offer all this for free right now. Wonderful, thank you. Nicole, did you have anything that you wanted to add on that? So I agree with Maria. We're very excited that we get to offer this for free now to caregivers. And the most amazing thing that we've found on our journey is the support of everyone else in the aging industry. That's been really encouraging. It seems like all the other companies and all of everyone else who's working towards helping caregivers and older adults thrive in older age, they really come together and help support each other. So we've had a lot of that over the last five years as well, which has been amazing. And We've really been working on, in our team, making something that's really gonna matter to people and is gonna impact our lives in a positive way. So we've tested the waters with several different revenue models, speaking of that specifically. And it became clear that the only way to spread this to as many people as possible and make the largest impact would be if we were to give this for free. So we've recently taken the leap, leap of faith, and decided to do this and monetize in other less traditional ways. So. That's where we're at and we're excited. Well, that is exciting and it is, it is hard because people are just tied, you know, money-wise when it comes to if you're dealing with some type of illness and, and things, there are constraints and even with uh, communities, you know, professional communities, their budgets are getting cut and stuff all the time and it's just a, it's a wonderful site and just such a, a rich, rich um, resource. Um, Maria, can you talk a little bit about your own passion? Behind Maria's place? Yeah, well, I, I think the main thing, I really enjoy being with older people. I find the stories that they have of a life lived is just amazing. I learn a lot from them, and I think that's absolutely great. We have caregiver stories on the site from people that have had either problems or find things that really worked, and they have, they're sharing them with us. So that, that's a really nice section of the site. They're relating their own experience and what, what worked and what didn't work in different situations. I'm a great believer in lifelong learning. I was a very late starter myself. I taught myself to do patchwork and crafts in my late 30s. Went on to 
get a degree in visual arts in my early 50s. And I got a huge satisfaction out of this process. It's, it's great, I think, to be learning new things all the time and doing new things. And as part of the degree course, I did a community arts project in a day centre for older adults. And we actually physically produced our old games and puzzles and lots of other fun activities. And I know those games are still played in that place today. And it's satisfying to know that you've it's sort of helped people get, yeah, fight, get more activities and maybe get more out of life sometimes. So I, I really get a kick out of seeing someone maybe in their 80s or 90s doing something they've never done before and managing it and feeling proud that they're doing it. Even it might take a little while for some people to get started. But um, yeah, it's really, it's really good. Great, thank you. Nicole, how about you? What's, what's your passion button there? Well, for me, my passion lies in making a positive impact on the world. That's something that is really important to me. And I don't have the same type of experience as Maria has as far as working with older people hands-on. What I do have is great passion for bringing more smiles, joy, and fulfillment to people's lives. And this is one of the most important things in my life. So when Maria came to me and approached me about Maria's place, I felt a really strong pull and an emotional connection to the project. And it, it felt really good. And I'm just really grateful to be a big part of it. Wonderful. I have to ask you, because with, with Maria, I can kind of see the background and stuff. With you, what, what brought you to wanting to bring smiles and joy to people? I don't really know. I just feel like it's a part of my my mission in life. I don't know. Maybe I was just, I don't know, born like that. I really, I just have a really strong belief that people need to smile more and be nicer to each other and have a good life. And it's just really, really important to me. And that's how I live every day. And it just is something that's important to me. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> Wonderful. And, th and that's perfectly fine. I just thought it might be interesting if there was a, a mentor or situation or something, but I like that it's just ingrained to you. You know, that's just who you, who you are at your core. Um, Maria, why don't you tell us about some benefits of activities as, as one ages, um, not only for the person maybe they're caring for, but the, the care partners, both professional and family as well. Well, there are lots of statistics and information on why staying active is beneficial. It will improve your quality of life. So take physical activities. So doing exercises and staying active, it will make you physically stronger, your muscles. It can improve your balance because you're stronger, which in turn would lead to fewer falls. And that way you can, you can stay independent for longer. And it can also reduce the risk of developing certain diseases like diabetes and heart disease. Mental activity, I think that's my favorite. I love quizzes and word games. I love making them. That's part of the kick I get out of Maria's place as well. I get to make all these lovely activities. It's important for keeping the brain active and it reduces the risk of cognitive decline. And doing creative activities and brain exercises that are manageable with a little bit of challenge it's fun and it can also be very social if you do it with other people. And the social activity, that's something I think we need at any age. Being involved with others reduces the risk of mental issues like depression and loneliness, which can be a big issue for, aging, for the aging population. And being with others, it creates a sense of belonging. You're part of a, a bigger picture. And there are lots of activities relating to this on the site. I think for the care giver, the care partner, as you say, uh, staying physically fit is very important because it can be a very strain, strenuous job. And staying mentally fit as well will help you stay engaged and engage the person. You, you sort of do it together. I think it's, a lot of it is a partnership and doing things together, acknowledging the other person, I think is just really important. And it can be isolating as well, being a, a care partner. So it's important to keep in touch with friends and family and, and not isolate yourself too much in that situation. 
So, so Nicole, can you share with us a little bit about how to use your website? Sure. Our biggest goal with our website is to make it as user friendly as possible so that people can find exactly what they're looking for easily and find activities that will be suitable for the ability level of the people they're working with. And we've created a short video that shows an entire tour of the site. So that will be playing next. So here we are at mariasplace.com. And I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of how to navigate our site. And so you can see what we have here. So if you use this top menu, you'll see the types of activities we have. So in the creative side, we've got craft activities. And these are all how-to videos. And it doesn't matter if you're a professional crafter or not, they're all suitable for everyone to do. They're all really fun. We've got Maria's journal, which is Maria's experiences in the nursing home and working with older adults. And so tips and tricks and all sorts of goodies in there. We've got recipes, coloring, seasonal activities. And these are some of the bigger holidays throughout the year. And which activities would be great to do for them. We've got caregiver stories, which are stories from caregivers all around the world. Body and mind activities. These are more mental, physical, and relaxation type of activities. So you can see we've got tons of different word games, quizzes, brain games, reflections, which are more poems, quotes, inspiration, relaxation. We've got scenic videos which are great. They're 15 to 20 minutes long and they're from all over the world and they're just really relaxing to sit down and take a quiet moment. We've got exercise and massage. Our exercises are all seated activities right now. So they're seated exercises for sitting in a chair or a wheelchair. We've got massage how-to videos so that you can learn how to massage your loved one's hands or feet and help them in that way. We've got meditations, trivia lists, spot the difference, memory games, and then games and groups, which is a collection of games to do within a group setting. We've got planning and education for all of you out there who are professional caregivers. This is a great area for some tools. So we've got an events calendar. And so basically this calendar shows every month of the year and it shows all of the religious observances, holidays, uh, internationally throughout the world. So if you have a diverse group of people you're working with, you will know what's happening every day of the year. We've got calendar templates. These are great if you need to put your activity program onto a printable calendar and post it in your facility or email it out. Uh, we've got daily, weekly, and monthly templates here. Activity program, you'll see a way to search for activities based on ability or gender or anything you want. Um, we've got caregiver education, which includes courses that are in development right now, as well as general education. And this is great for volunteers, professionals, as well as in-home caregivers. So we've got a little bit of everything for each one in there. We've got a list of products that we recommend, and then we've got caregiver resources. So if you want to take a look at, for example, a craft activity. This is our craft activities page. And if you scroll down, you'll see the first few are open without a lock and the rest of them have locks on them. This is because to get full access to our site, we would love for you to sign up for free. Everything here is free and then you can have access to everything we offer. So if you go into any section of our site, all the pages look like this. So you're in crafts, you're in recipes, you're in brain games. You'll see that there's just a bunch of activities in each section here. We'll go, we'll go into painting in four parts. This is one of our more popular ones. As I mentioned, most of our crafts are in how-to video format. So you'll have a video up here which shows how to make the project. And then you'll have a supply list. And then you'll have directions on how to do it with different types of people or different needs, one-on-one, -on -one, in a group, and all of that stuff. So every single activity on our site has this section down here and how you might use the activity with the people you're working for, with. Now let's go over to some word games. We'll go to alphabet word games. 
You'll see it looks a lot like crafts, but now we're in alphabet word games. So let's go into an alphabet word game just for an example. So here we have a printable page. So you come in and most of the brain games and mental activities, you just print this page out and then you bring it to the person you're working with and you do the activity together. So you can print here and then you will have the directions up here as well as more thorough directions down here and then a little bit of information on how to use it for the different scenarios like I said before. So another great way to look around our site is to use our search function. This is one of our favorite parts of our site. So say you're working with someone who has dementia. You type in dementia, you'll get everything on our site that has to do with dementia. So for example, if you typed in dementia, you'll see all these different types of activities and education and stories and all sorts of stuff. So if you're looking for something specific, like for men, for women, different stages of dementia, just type it into this search bar here and then you'll be able to filter through all of our activities that way as well. Thanks for stopping by our website. We hope you find it easy to navigate and that you can find lots of inspiration and activities here. Maria, can you show us some sample crafts, kind of talk about how to use some of your quizzes and, and creative crafts and things that you have? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll start with the crafts. That's, that's my background, I suppose, crafts. So we have lots of craft tutorials on the site. Most of them are in video format and they all have step-by-step -step instructions. So if a person is no longer physically able to do an activity on their own, they might be able to, to paint maybe a hand over hand. Somebody put their hand over, you, over yours and help you do the painting. They might like to watch someone else paint. I find lots of people in the nursing home they enjoy watching others. They might not be quite capable of doing it themselves, but they, they enjoy watching it. And I think even watching the video can be an activity in itself. Maybe they can contribute suggestions. You can still involve people, even if they aren't actually able to do it. So they can tell you if they prefer, if you use blue or green in a certain place, or if you like that flower or that flower, if you're making greeting cards. And uh, I, it's really important to, to involve people. I've got. There's a, a sample page here of uh, colouring pages. We have a lot of colouring pages. And for those people then that aren't quite confident enough to do their own drawing before they paint, but they still like painting, there's lots of those and they just, you can print them. Just press the button and print them out. And there's another sample here. This is leaf printing. You just paint leaves and it can be an activity in itself going out, picking the leaves and decided deciding what trees they come from and then using the paints and making nice pictures and cards. So we have seasonal crafts. I have a few samples here. It's a little Easter chicken. And this one can be modified as well. This one is using bits of fabric and glue and might be a little bit more difficult. Uh, you could use paint and just paint them and uh, stick a fork in the bottom with this polystyrene and it'll hold it in place while you're doing it. It, it can be made as easy or as difficult as, as you want this one to be. We have uh, St. Patrick's Day, lots of paper crafts for St. Patrick's Day. Being in Ireland, we have to put that one in. And all step by step, th th those ones actually uh, can be downloaded, the whole instruction sheets. There's another little bird for Christmas, which could be made for any time of the year, a little padded object. What else have we? We have quizzes and word games. Most of the quizzes in Maria's Place have ABC options, multiple choice options for the answers. And there's a reason behind that. If you're doing a quiz with somebody that is, that is very cognitively aware and knows lots, you would just ask the question without giving the answers. And OK, so you don't get a response, then you give out the answers. And very often, in even if you don't think you know the answer, when you actually hear the right answer, some automatic memory will kick in in the back of your head and, and you'll know it. And if that still doesn't work, I would always encourage people to, to guess because it, it's a confidence thing. Uh, if they feel confident guessing, then you know that they feel they're in a safe place. And I'd never tell them that it's 
you know, gosh, that's bad. That's, you got it all wrong. It doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. I think giving an opinion is, is really what matters there. It's a, it can be a social activity. And also, I think bringing reminiscence into quizzes rather than doing 10 questions that's on the sheet and it's all done in five minutes. If the question is about a country, maybe you can chat about the country. Have you ever been to Italy? What, what uh, favourite, what, if it's about a food, did you ever cook with this food? Where do you think it comes from? Just ask questions and, and make a conversation out of it. I think that's important with nearly all the word games there that can be done. Um, we had a, a creative writing group in St. Elizabeth's Nursing Home where I work. And I ran this for about three years. And we, I had a small group, about five or six people at a time. At least half of those had dementia. And everybody took part very successfully. I found in the beginning, I gave everybody a copy book and a pencil and I asked them to write, you know, a short sentence about this, that or the other. And then I realized that half the people didn't really know how to write anymore. And a couple of people were able to write, but then they weren't able to read their own writing. So they couldn't actually relate back what they had written. So we had to scrap that bit. But you learn by experience. It's always the way. So I got a whiteboard and I put the whiteboard up at one end of the table. And uh, I did the writing, but they, they contributed the, the words. So we might have a theme like springtime or weather, or I'd place an object on the table and we wrote about it. And there was no impediment to having dementia for anybody there. In fact, it was, I thought it was very good because there was less inhibitions. Whatever came into their head, they just said it. And this actually had a really good effect on the rest of the group because they realized, again, this is a safe space. You can come out with ideas and it can be more fun. So if you like, I, I could read a couple of the poems that we did write. The, the first one here is about tea. Of course, being in Ireland, tea is a very big part of, of uh, living here. And it's very, very simple. It's called tea. A cup of tea, just for me. It came in a pot and was nice and hot. I really enjoyed it, and why not? It was as simple as that, but I, I think it's, it's joyous, and it's, it just shows, mm, it's just some, there's warmth in it, I think. I agree. Um, I agree yeah. with you. Can you have another one you can share too? I have another one. I have one here. Uh, th this, we actually made the book. I'll just show you the book first. Uh, this is called Poems from the Winter of Life. And the title was made by my manager, Brenda. She came up with the title. So we had all these poems. And I put photographs. And there's the cup of tea and two of our residents. Can you see it properly? And we made a book. We had a book launch with a very famous Irish poet came to launch the book with us. And the newspaper came and took photographs. And it was just brilliant. And... One of the poems wrote, and I think it's my favourite of them all, is called The Cedar Wood Box. So this is the box that I put on the table. It came from Africa originally. And it was made from, I told them it was made from cedar wood. And it was a little bit slow starting this poem. So I just asked some leading questions like, who do you think this box belonged to? And where did it come from? And so on. So I'm just going to read it for you. The Cedar Wood Box. My grandmother owns a special box. It's made from cedar wood. It holds her secret treasures, her rings, her necklace and her watch. My granddad was a traveling man. He went both far and wide. He liked to purchase gifts abroad. This box was for his bride. She really loves this precious gift and keeps it in a drawer, away from little peeping eyes. My grandma's special box. It really brings tears to my eyes every time I read this. I, I thought it was lovely. And that was by people that had never written really anything in their lives before. And I, I think it's just great. So you facilitated drawing out the pieces to put it together yes. into a poem. No, wor no words in any of our poems, like no full sentence came from me, but asking questions would draw them out. And I think also, uh, yeah, as, as dementia progresses, it takes the person longer to process information. I've been told up to seven times longer. So as caregivers, we have to adjust to this, speaking clearly, not too fast, 
asking simple questions or give instructions one step at a time, maybe limit number of choices uh, and, and get people involved. Everybody had a chance to get involved in this. And it was nice. We, we tried to get a group where there was no really, really strong personalities so that everybody got a chance to, to have a go. So we were all involved. It was it was really good. Well, that's fun. Now, I know you mentioned, um, like with the quizzes, how you could modify it for the different levels. When it comes to say, let's just take, you know, the the uh, shamrock or the three, three, uh, three leaf clover that, you know, has, yeah. um, it looks like some pretty fine motor skills. And how, how yeah. can that be adapted for people as they progress with the disease? Well, Doing things together, I think, and making choices, like I said before, is really important. These, the, the background is probably harder to do. The, the little hearts here, you, don't have, you can actually fold the paper over so you have a smaller cut. You can do hand over hand as well. And watching an activity sometimes is just as good for somebody. Do you know? I, I, I really think so. And you could draw the outline of it and get them to paint it get someone else to cut it out and then they have input in it the other way um yeah i i think you, you just the the person your loved one whoever you're caring for you're the person that knows that one that person best there's a lot of persons here you're the person that knows your loved one the best and i think you you gradually figure out what they can do what they can't do and really encourage participation as much as possible, that's really important. And make an activity into more than just an activity. Like if you're making a flower arrangement, take a trip to the shop and choose the flowers. Go to your, into your garden or your neighbor's garden with the secretaries and cut some foliage for it. And then when you've made your flower arrangement, watch the video. It's always good to see the finished product before you make it. That's, I think that's quite important because then you know what your aim is. But when, you, when you're finished making, you have this lovely little flower arrangement, take a photograph of it, send it to your best friend or put it on the wall and just make it more than just an activity. And I think, yeah, we're all, we're all very busy. And sometimes as a caregiver, it's easier to do things by ourselves because it's quicker than allowing people the time to do it. But we all have a, a need to feel needed and useful regardless of our circumstances, be it able to set the table or sort the washing, brush our own teeth or the daily tasks or as, as with the crafts as well. Give the people a chance to do as much as they can and just allow the time. I think that's really, really important. Allowing people to do their thing in their own time as well on the, on the caregiver story section of our site. I think one of the things that I, I liked what you were saying is, you know, you said some people, they're just comfortable watching. They're still part of the group. If you allow them to be part of the group, if you're inclusive, and sometimes I think we we judge too much and art is not to be judged, you know? It, it, we, we know that everyone is gonna view art a little bit different. So embrace it as beautiful at whatever level they're able to contribute and whatever brings them joy. and 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 lift them up because when we lift them up then we're lifting ourselves and everyone around them up as well I, I think sometimes i know in my own family my brothers didn't see always the beauty and the joy of some of the stuff my mom did because they were judging and thinking well that's childish and it's like if it brings somebody comfort and it brings them joy you know why are you judging it at, at that you know and so i think I loved your idea about, you know, take a picture, share it with somebody else or, you know, maybe maybe make that arrangement. And if you got the flowers out of the neighbor's garden, maybe go give it to them, you know, back as, you know, just let them feel proud of what they what they accomplished, I think is just so important um, as a whole. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, the book I showed you earlier, earlier on, there are so many websites out, out there now that will make a really nice book. So if you're doing activities with somebody, say the flower arranging or something, take a photograph. And when you have enough photographs, it doesn't have to be a portrait book. Make a book for yourself and your loved one and so that you can look and see what, what you have done. It's, it's, those books are fantastic. 
and not difficult to do either. I agree. And I, I think it's important for people to capture those moments of joy because sometimes we get down when we're when we're giving care, we get tired or exhausted. But you know, it's good for them to be able to reminisce and look at those, but it's also good for the care partners to see what is accomplished and what they've what they've done together as well. So again, I, I appreciate all that you guys have put together. It's just it's really an amazing amazing sight can i just ask something here just remember when my mother was very ill very she was quite far gone not very much life left uh my sister used to go and sit with her and knit so there was there was really no word spoken but there was a great sense of calm and companionship in the room just by being there and being together and that was probably very nice for both of them and if you want another anecdote, I remember one of the nurses that used to come every morning to, to visit my mother. She arrived one hot summer's morning with red nail varnish on her toes. So my mother thought this was absolutely great. And she decided she wanted red nail varnish on her toes. So she sent me off to the shop with a strict instruction to buy raspberry red nail varnish for her toes. So off I went, got the nail varnish and... Uh, we painted her nails and she was so happy. There's just this little thing. Nobody really saw the, the nails, only me and my dad and my sister. And they were under the sheets most of the time. But, but she knew they were there. And I think it's important to create happy moments. Being a caregiver can be really hard. But having things like that to remember is so important afterwards. That's a, a whole kind of dignity and respect. And I think, uh, again, one of the words that I loved you use was, you know, your sister sitting there with your mom knitting, and it was about companionship. Mm -hmm. And companionship, I think, is so yeah. undervalued these days. And it really, truly is one of the greatest gifts we have, because how wonderful is it to just sit silently with somebody and feel safe and loved mm -hmm. and, and part of. You know, we don't always have to fill uh, fill the air with noise and talk and chatter. Um, peacefulness is a, is pretty cool if we allow it to happen. And I think learning to read some of the nonverbal signs of, you know, with the painted toes, toes, how how much um, joy that gave her, how much satisfaction, how much pride there was in that, and just the the intimacy too of taking the time to paint somebody's toes or nails. That touch that we don't always get as we age. And um, we, we take, I think we take so much for granted. And I think our, our elders have so much to teach us and, and same with those living with dementia. So um, thank you for those, those anecdotes. Nicole, can you tell us a little bit about the, the future of Maria's place and what do you see the vision being? I think that one of the biggest things that can change the world is connection. And just like you said, connecting with another human being. And I really think that that is the biggest thing missing in all of society these days. I know that there is a lot of personal connection here and there, but there's also a lot of wars and a lot of depression and mental illness and all of that stuff and wouldn't it just be a lot better if everyone connected more person to person and talked to each other more and spent the time together and so i think our biggest vision for the future is to grow into a huge cooperative website where there are millions and millions of members all going through the same thing all around the world and they all contribute ideas and experiences and it becomes a place of inspiration and community for caregivers where they can really talk to each other and give each other ideas of things that worked and things that didn't work and, and just thrive and connect with other people. So that's what we see as the big future goal is to just become the hub of people coming for inspiration and trying to make their lives better and the lives of the people they care for better with more engagement and connection. So as we mentioned before, it is a completely free resource. And for this free model to work out, we need the volume of visitors to keep going up. So this is where I will ask the audience, whoever's listening, to get involved, give feedback, visit our site, become a member, try some activities, and tell your friends about it. And 
if this project means a lot to you and you care about the cause, tell your friends and together we can continue to grow it to its full potential. I love that. I, I Listening to you, I'm looking at you going, old soul and a young body. You got a lot of wisdom in there, girl. And it's, it's nice to see. I think, um, you know, I think it's just so important that, that we share um, experiences because, you know, our own stories and the things that we're doing are so powerful and they can help people out um, and help them miss some of the missteps that maybe others have taken in the past when it comes to caring for somebody, filling in some of those gaps. And, and I think when you lend a hand out to others to help, um, they're more likely to lend a hand to somebody else and to participate and in, in join in, in the journey um, of this cooperative called Maria's Place. I mean, it's just, a, like I said, it's a, a brilliant site filled with just fantastic information for people. It'll be a wonderful, wonderful reservoir of resources for people. So I really encourage them to to go and they, all they have to do is go to mariasplace.com. That's mariasplace.com. You could be on their site all day long. There's just so much there. It'll make your jobs easier as a family member at any age. If it's a young child that wants to go color with grandma and grandpa, um, or if it's a professional, or a daughter, there, there's something for, I think, all ages to help take the scary out about engaging a person who's aging um, or who has dementia. And so again, I, I thank you so much. Anything else that you wanted to add? Oh, I just hope that people will come and visit the site and enjoy and give us feedback. We want to hear what you think. And if you have something that really worked for, for your loved one, or tell us. And let's put a, a, another post up on the site about what worked for you. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for participating. And again, and please, please share this. Go to mariasplace.com uh, and you will, you will not want to leave. You will feel very comfortable and very engaged. Uh, they've really laid it out and designed it quite nicely. So thank you all and we'll talk to you next time.